I myself, as many, I think, uh, people who practice uh, gender anthropology, or what I'll call GA from here on, uh, in, it, it, they got there through Girard. In fact, Eric Gans, who is the main theorist of gender anthropology, was, I think, the first or one of the very first graduate students, PhD grad students of, of Rene Girard. And uh, uh, the and my own trajectory sort of followed that kind of line in a way. I, I, I did my dissertation in my first book uh, using Girardian mimetic theory, uh, but I had encountered Gans uh, and, and GA as part of that research. And then when I got out to British Columbia, where there was a cluster of people very interested in it, including Andrew Bartlett, uh, then I, I really moved on to, G, to GA. But I, I consider the two complementary. The crucial concept remains for both of them mimetic desire. And, it's, it's a, and, and then when you start talking about the anthropological side of it, the, um, the question of human origin and so forth, both uh, GA and mimetic theory uh, envision uh, an intensification of mimetic desire that leads to a crisis, um, that, that, that this occurs at the origin of the human. Now, the GA is not, does not take exactly the same position as regards to the sign. The role of the sign and language ultimately is much more crucial or much more central or earlier, maybe we could say, in GA than it is in mimetic theory. So we, in GA, we thought it was more plausible that the object of de desire of contention in the, at the origin of the human, the proto-humans uh, engage in an intensification of mimetic desire, that the object of desire is more likely to have been alimentary, something to eat. Uh, and that the, the idea of a breakdown of identity uh, because of, uh, of, the, of the sort of subject um, uh, um, uh, and model relationship amongst those proto-humans seemed to us more likely to be a more a later development, a somewhat later development at any rate. So uh, um, the, uh, uh, the, the deferral of violence um, through the, uh, uh, the emission of the sign leading to the, the designation of a zone of, of prohibition of sacrality, establishing thereby a ge geometry of center and periphery. That's the crucial idea of, uh, of, uh, of uh, gender anthropology of GA. But of course you can see how homologous that is or similar that is in some ways to the circle of persecutors around the scapegoat in the mimetic theories version of things. So that, that uh, our, our sense is that after the deferral, which was only ever a deferral, not a prohibition or, 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 or control of violence, uh, after the deferral that discharged resentment uh, of, of being denied the object of desire in, in the center uh, would be that discharge of, of, uh, of resentment would be the kind of violence that we call the sparagmos, the original feast, as it were, tearing the object of desire apart uh, and, and consuming it. That that has some clear similarities to the scapegoat, um, uh, emissary murder, or whatever uh, term you, you want to use from mimetic theory. Um, so the only difference would be that for us, the sense of order occurs before the sporagmos or and is and is then ex, you know expressed in the sporagmos which would have had a degree it could have been a very small degree but a degree of cooperation cooperation that made it less dangerous and less violent than than uh, would have been the case otherwise in other words the proto human had become too mimetic too violent to survive as such and this is a, a mechanism for controlling or limiting the damage and, and violence, as you were. At any rate, so yeah, so it's it's in a way then I, I know in mimetic theory, the first sign is then the dead body of the scapegoat, as I recall. But you know, we we feel that the sign had to come first. So we it's a cru in a way, what we're doing is crucially redefining desire, mm -hmm. desire itself. In the mem uh, mimetic theory, I believe, desire exists prior to the, the scapegoat death, the emissary murder and so forth. The desire is the word even used for that sort of mimetic impulse. In GA, and it's maybe just a question of terms, but in GA, we reserve the term desire for the appetitive mediated by the sign. You have to have the sign before you have desire, human desire, properly speaking. 
So uh, the sign creates, is a reflection of and creates desire ultimately, intensifies desire uh, at the same time as it restricts uh, uh, the violence of, uh, of uh, rivalrous appropriation. There might be several different answers. I mean, ours is a little drier. Uh, in a way, you know, um, ours doesn't give you much purchase on your own resentments. I mean, uh, if, if you feel, for example, uh, if your, your worldview is one of intense social injustice uh, and so forth, or if you're a Christian, strongly Christian or uh, religiously engaged, um, then I think the, the scapegoat mechanism gives you, well, I won't say a weapon, but it gives you <laughs> a path towards some sort of satisfactory engagement with, with social issues and, and so forth. Whereas, you know, it's not that GA people are not concerned with social issues, they very much are, like all of us, but the tool itself, the heuristic itself is not in, you know, it's not politically biased, it's not, it doesn't offer an immediate, um, as I say, expression of resentment or, or political position and so forth. That might be part of it. I also just think, and I, you might agree or not, and, but maybe some of the, the, the cover folks would, René Chichard was a wonderful rhetorician. I mean, he was a great writer. He was arrogant in his style in some ways. He didn't pay all that much attention to what other folks said. Uh, he was, uh, but he was, he was a master of aphorisms and of uh, brilliantly cl uh, clarifying kind of statements. Uh, one, of, one of my favorites is, you know, that all modern thought is, um, which word did he use, distorted or, or uh, invalidated or undermined uh, by a cult, uh, by a uh, mystique of transgression <laughs> and this kind of thing. So yeah, I mean, he was great that way. Now, Eric Gans, and I think a number of the writers in our group are very good writers, and, 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 but they are, they're not quite as good rhetoricians as you were, or, or maybe they're not writing to the same kind of effect. That might, that might have been one reason. Uh, uh, a GA doesn't, as I say, it's a, it's a, it's a more mm, drier, more analytical kind of tool in some, maybe, maybe, I mean, uh, and, uh, but can be used to any number of different purposes. And, you know, our group has Probably, if I dare say it, our group probably has a wider political spectrum of, in it, amongst its members uh, than perhaps Cover does. But anyway, I, yeah. I'll leave it at that. I mean, I admire Cover. I admire yeah. Girard greatly, as I hope you can see. Uh, and uh, um, I just keep hoping that you know we're we're gonna you know we're gonna catch on and we, we keep trying. <laughs>